that someone at Fox is trying to destroy Tucker Carlson's reputation. Now, it's not clear whether this is a rogue employee or whether it's something more official, but there's a lot of speculation on this. Regardless, so far it does look like the plan is backfiring on it. Videos and internal messages of Tucker are being provided to New York Times and to Media Matters, which was founded by longtime Hillary Clinton ally David Brock. While the first to go public was a video of Tucker speaking casually and criticizing Fox Nation. Watch this. I don't want to be a slave to Fox Nation, which I don't think that many people watch anyway. But nobody's going to watch it on Fox Nation. Nobody watches Fox Nation because the site sucks. So I'd really like to just put the dump the whole thing on YouTube. Um, but anyway, that's just my view. Um, uh, I'm just frustrated with the, in, it, it's hard to use that site. I don't know why they're not fixing it. It's driving me insane. And they're like making like lifetime movies, but they don't, they don't work on the infrastructure of the site. Like what? It's crazy. And it drives me crazy because it's like we're doing all this extra work and no one can find it. It's unbelievable, actually. We're like working like animals to produce all this content and the people in charge of it, whoever that guy's, whatever his name is, like they're ignoring the fact that the site doesn't work. And it, it's, I think it's like a betrayal of our efforts. That's how I feel. So I, of course, I resent it. So basically, Tucker is saying he wants to do a formal interview and not a casual interview and criticizes the Fox Nation flat platform, suggesting the amount of work that goes into what he's doing is not justified by the lower view viewership on the platform or by its difficult to use uh, user interface. Now, it's, it's a fair critique, some would argue. But here's another video that was leaked with an off-camera discussion between Tucker Carlson and Pierce Morgan. I think it's totally cool. So let's, um, is, if we're going to talk about sex, I'd love to hit some of the fine points of technique. <laughs> but you know, but it's your show. It's totally up to you. We can certainly talk about your sexual technique, especially after your tanning testicles last week. <laughs> Not mine. Uh, we'll, we'll speak in more general terms, but I've got something to add. Too much. Scandalous. Well, you be the judge of that, of course. What the media is missing is the context of these comments. They were talking about Tucker's special feature, End of Men, which is on why testosterone levels in men were dropping, and also whether this is being caused by chemicals in our environment. Regardless, the public has spoken on this issue. It appears the overwhelming public sentiment is actually still with Tucker. Here's a small sample of Twitter users that show really what is the general tone. Catherine Ivey here says, These have been so fun to watch. Hope they, have one, hope they have more. One of the few commentators I would pay to watch. Another one, Jumbleweed, says, How does it make him look bad? Now we've seen him without his makeup. And generally, many of them are like this, folks. Aside from the videos released by Media Matters, which is known for its attacks on conservative media, the New York Times also came out with his own hit piece using Fox documents that were leaked to them. Part of this is attempting to frame the narrative on why Tucker left Fox. Now, I should note, it's still not publicly clear, at least, why Tucker Carlson and Fox News parted ways. There are plenty of rumors on this, but really, these rumors aren't the official excuses being pushed by the corporate media. The New York Times and others claim that Tucker was fired for criticizing the Fox leadership. Now, they published this story says Carlson's text that alarmed Fox leaders. It's not how white men fight. The discovery of the text message contributed to a chain of events, they say at least, ultimate, that ultimately led to Tucker Carlson's firing. Now in it, they show a text message that Tucker sent to a producer. I'll read it here. You be the judge. Tucker said this. He said a couple weeks ago I was watching video of people fighting on the street in Washington. A group of Trump guys surrounded an Antifa kid and started pounding the living expletive out of him. He said it was three against one at least. Jumping a guy like that is dishonorable, obviously. It's not how white men fight. Yet suddenly I found myself rooting for the mob against the man, hoping they'd hit him harder, kill him. I really wanted them to hurt the kid. It's Tucker, of course, saying this. Tucker said, I could taste it. Then somewhere deep in my brain, an alarm went off. This isn't good for me. I'm becoming something I don't want to be. He said, the Antifa creep is a human being. 
Much as I despise what he says and does, much as I'm sure I'd hate him personally if I knew him, I shouldn't gloat over his suffering. I should be, I should be bothered by it. I should remember that somewhere, somebody probably loves this kid. It would be crushed if he was killed. If I don't care about those things, if I reduce people to their politics, how am I better than he is? Now, on this, public sentiment on that one was really divided more along partisan lines. Many on the left claimed the tweet was racist. Many on the right pointed out that Tucker's statement was really an introspection of not getting pulled in by hate and to not judge people by their politics. Now, again, up to you, agree or disagree, you be the judge. But more broadly speaking, most of the debate with the leaks hasn't been much about Tucker at all. Instead, much of the official debate has shifted to just what took place behind the scenes, what looks like an attempt really to destroy Tucker Carlson's reputation. People are wondering who leaked these files, who leaked the documents. They want to know why leaked videos and text messages were handed over to Media Matters and the New York Times, which would be expected, of course, to use them for partisan hit pieces. And they want to know whether Fox is involved with these attacks on a former star host of the network. Now, former, to former Fox News talk show host Kelly, uh, Megan Kelly, who now hosts the Megan Kelly Show, said that Fox News itself, at least she says, may be trying to destroy Tucker Carlson's credibility. Watch this. All right, so let me tell you what this is about. Uh, I was talking with Melissa Francis, who came on this show last week and a longtime Fox vet, too. We talked about how the mission now has to be Tucker's audience can't go with him. These numbers at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. are disaster for Fox. And Tucker cannot go to Newsmax, which has offered him big numbers, uh, according to reports. They, uh, Newsmax would love to have Tucker just move, slide on over to 8 p.m. And unlike digital media, it would allow him to remain live, which I know Tucker really likes. And there would be some reasons to do that. I could see why Tucker would say yes to that. I'm sure they're finding ways to open the bank account in new ways for Tucker. But you see, that's a threat to Fox. That actually is a real threat to Fox. And so what we have to telegraph to Chris Ruddy, who owns Newsmax and any other potential employer is, Tucker's a, he, he's difficult. He's not a team player. He rips on you from the inside, you see. He calls women, allegedly, the C word in his private messages, which were never meant to see the light of day. We need a police the way you think now, you see, even on your private time. He, he says bad things about the company's digital offerings. And by the way, at Newsmax, their digital offering is their strongest brand. They, that's where they make their money, their digital brand. So you see, he's a hassle. He's a difficult employee. He's not a team player. He rips on you from the inside. This is all an orchestrated hit job, in my opinion, and it's not a subtle one. So is this just a hit job? Well, in reality, we still don't know. But others in the news industry are suggesting this as well. Investigative journalist Glenn Greenwald, for example, had this to say. He wrote on Twitter, there's obviously a decision by Fox to wage a massive war on Tucker Carlson's character, partnering both with both the NYT, New York Times, and Media Matters to do it. And it's extremely odd for many reasons, beginning with the fact that he hasn't uttered a negative word about them. Tucker is also in a difficult position. He's still under contract with Fox, folks. And because of this, he's not able to give interviews to defend himself. He's muzzled while he's being attacked. And at the same time, it appears someone at the company that he's under contract with to not speak publicly is leaking information about him to destroy his credibility and damage his ability to find work in the news industry. So given this situation, that it seems like Fox is, again, the leaker there, is attacking Tucker, and a Fox contract has been able to defend himself or speak about it, will Fox either allow Tucker to speak to defend himself or will the network come out to defend him against these leaks? If they don't do one of those two things, they risk looking like they're behind it. 